Have you ever wondered if being kind could actually be a double-edged sword? Imagine this, you're the person who always goes the extra mile, who never says no to helping others. But what if all this kindness could actually lead to unexpected consequences? Welcome to 10 Ways How Kindness Will Ruin Your Life. Have you ever felt like your acts of kindness sometimes go unappreciated or taken for granted? Do you find yourself exhausted, constantly putting others' needs before your own? Picture this, you're at work and your colleague asks for help with a project. You've got your own workload, but you agree to assist because you don't want to let them down. Welcome to Wisdom Woven, where we unravel the complexities of life's lessons. If you're enjoying this content, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more insightful discussions. Now, let's dive into how kindness, despite its virtues, can sometimes lead us down unexpected paths. 1. The Perfectionist Dilemma Kindness often comes with a desire to do things perfectly. When things don't go as planned, the pressure to maintain that image of being the kind one can become overwhelming. 2. Emotional Exhaustion Constantly putting others' needs before your own can drain you emotionally, leaving you feeling empty and depleted. 3. Sacrificing Boundaries Kindness sometimes leads us to sacrifice our own boundaries in order to accommodate others, leaving us vulnerable to exploitation or manipulation. 4. The cycle of overcommitment. Saying yes to every request out of kindness can lead to overcommitment, leaving you stretched thin and unable to fulfill your obligations effectively. 5. Being taken advantage of. Some people may exploit your kindness for their own benefit, leaving you feeling used and unappreciated. 6. Difficulty saying no. The fear of disappointing others or being seen as unkind can make it challenging to say no when necessary, leading to resentment and burnout. 7. Ignoring personal needs. Constantly prioritizing the needs of others can lead to neglecting your own needs, resulting in physical and emotional strain. 8. Enabling toxic behavior. Kindness can inadvertently enable toxic behavior in others by reinforcing negative patterns or allowing them to avoid taking responsibility for their actions. 9. Strained Relationships Unbalanced acts of kindness can create tension and resentment in relationships, as one party may feel burdened by the imbalance of give and take. 10. Self-identity crisis Over-identification with being the kind one can blur your sense of self and lead to confusion about your own desires and priorities. As we explore these 10 ways kindness can complicate our lives, remember that kindness itself is not the problem. It's how we navigate its complexities that determine its impact on our well-being. Join us in the next part as we delve deeper into the paradox of kindness. Lesson 1. The Paradox of Kindness In a world where kindness is often celebrated as a virtue, there exists a paradoxical reality that many overlook. While kindness is undoubtedly a noble quality, it can sometimes lead to unexpected consequences. Imagine this. You offer your help to everyone around you, expecting only gratitude in return. Yet, instead of appreciation, you find yourself taken advantage of or even criticized for your actions. This paradox of kindness is what we'll unravel in this segment. Think about the times when you've gone out of your way to assist someone, only to feel drained and unappreciated afterward. Perhaps you've lent a listening ear to a friend in need, only to find that they continue to lean on you without reciprocating. It's a common scenario that many can relate to. While your intentions were pure, the outcome may not have been as fulfilling as expected. Consider the story of Sam a kind-hearted individual who always put others' needs before his own. He volunteered at shelters, donated to charity, and was always there to lend a helping hand. Yet, despite his acts of kindness, Sam found himself feeling empty and exhausted. He realized that while he was busy taking care of everyone else, he had neglected his own well-being. This paradox of kindness is deeply rooted in human psychology and societal dynamics. On one hand, we're encouraged to be generous and compassionate towards others. On the other hand, excessive kindness can lead to a sense of imbalance and vulnerability. 
It's a delicate balance that requires careful consideration and self-awareness. In Buddhism, this paradox is often explored through the concept of metta or loving-kindness. While metta encourages practitioners to cultivate compassion and goodwill towards all beings, it also emphasizes the importance of discernment and self-preservation. In other words, kindness should not come at the expense of one's own happiness and well-being. So, how do we navigate this paradox of kindness in our daily lives? It starts with setting healthy boundaries and learning to say no when necessary. While it's important to help others, it's equally important to prioritize self-care and personal boundaries. By finding this balance, we can avoid the pitfalls of excessive kindness and cultivate a more sustainable approach to compassion. Ultimately, the paradox of kindness reminds us that while generosity is admirable, it should never come at the cost of our own happiness and fulfillment. By embracing both compassion and discernment, we can navigate the complexities of human relationships with greater ease and authenticity. So, let's explore the nuances of kindness and discover how we can cultivate a more balanced and fulfilling life. Lesson 2 Kindness as a Social Currency Kindness. It's the currency of social interactions, the glue that binds communities together. But have you ever stopped to think about its double-edged nature? While it seems like a straightforward path to popularity and acceptance, kindness can sometimes lead to unexpected pitfalls. At its core, kindness is about giving without expecting anything in return. It's about empathy, compassion, and altruism. Yet, in today's world, kindness can often be misconstrued as a tool for social advancement. Think about it. How often do we witness acts of kindness that are performed not out of genuine concern, but rather for the sake of appearances? From social media posts to public gestures, kindness can sometimes become a performance, a means to gain validation and approval from others. In this quest for social validation, individuals may find themselves trapped in a cycle of insincerity, where acts of kindness lose their authenticity. Instead of fostering genuine connections, kindness becomes a transactional tool, exchanged for likes, shares, and followers. Moreover, the pressure to maintain a facade of perpetual kindness can be exhausting. People may feel compelled to constantly display acts of generosity, even when they're struggling themselves. This pressure to conform to societal expectations can lead to burnout and emotional fatigue. Furthermore, kindness can inadvertently create imbalances in relationships. When one person consistently acts as the giver, while others only receive, it can foster dependency and enable unhealthy dynamics. This imbalance can strain relationships and lead to resentment on both sides. Additionally, Kindness can sometimes blur the boundaries between personal and professional spheres. In workplaces, individuals may feel pressured to constantly accommodate their colleagues, even at the expense of their own well-being. This can result in overextension and neglect of one's own needs. Furthermore, kindness can attract unwanted attention and exploitation. Predators may prey on individuals who are perceived as overly generous or empathetic, taking advantage of their goodwill for personal gain. This vulnerability can leave kind-hearted individuals susceptible to manipulation and harm. Moreover, kindness can inadvertently enable toxic behavior. By continuously forgiving and excusing others' actions in the name of kindness, individuals may inadvertently perpetuate harmful patterns and allow toxicity to thrive unchecked. Furthermore, Kindness can sometimes lead to feelings of guilt and inadequacy. When individuals are unable to meet the unrealistic expectations they've set for themselves, they may experience self-doubt and shame, believing they're not doing enough to help others. Additionally, kindness can hinder personal growth and development. When individuals prioritize the needs of others over their own aspirations and goals, they may stagnate in their own journey towards self-improvement. This can result in missed opportunities for growth and fulfillment. Moreover, kindness can sometimes breed complacency. When individuals become accustomed to receiving constant validation and praise for their acts of kindness, they may become reluctant to challenge themselves or step out of their comfort zones. 
this can hinder their ability to reach their full potential. Furthermore, kindness can create unrealistic expectations in relationships. When individuals expect constant displays of affection and generosity from their partners, it can place undue pressure on the relationship and lead to disappointment when expectations aren't met. In conclusion, while kindness is undoubtedly a noble and admirable trait, it's essential to recognize its complexities and potential drawbacks. By approaching kindness with mindfulness and discernment, individuals can navigate its nuances and cultivate genuine connections that enrich their lives and the lives of others. Lesson 3. The Burden of Expectation Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the weight of expectations? Imagine this. You're known for your kindness. People flock to you for help, support, and understanding. It's like you're a beacon of light in a world full of darkness. But here's the catch. With every act of kindness, the bar is set higher. People start expecting you to be there, always ready to lend a hand or a listening ear. It's like you're carrying the world's burdens on your shoulders, and the pressure can become suffocating. Think about it. You extend a helping hand to a friend in need, and suddenly, you're the go-to person for everyone's problems. Your kindness becomes a double-edged sword. While it's admirable, it also becomes a burden. You start questioning whether you're being kind out of genuine compassion or simply out of obligation. It's not just about the external pressure either. Sometimes the harshest expectations come from within. You set impossibly high standards for yourself, believing that kindness means sacrificing your own needs and desires for the sake of others. But here's the truth. You can't pour from an empty cup. Ignoring your own well-being in the pursuit of kindness only leads to burnout and resentment. And let's not forget about the guilt. When you inevitably fall short of meeting everyone's expectations, guilt creeps in like a silent thief. You feel guilty for saying no, guilty for prioritizing your own needs, guilty for not being able to solve everyone's problems. It's a vicious cycle that traps you in a web of self-doubt and anxiety. But here's the silver lining. It's okay to set boundaries. It's okay to say no. It's okay to prioritize your own well-being. True kindness starts with yourself. By taking care of your own needs, you become better equipped to help others from a place of genuine compassion rather than obligation. Remember, kindness is not about carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. It's about spreading warmth and light wherever you go, including to yourself. So, the next time you feel the burden of expectation weighing you down, take a step back, breathe, and remember that it's okay to be kind to yourself too. Lesson 4. Kindness and Self-Sacrifice Kindness often walks hand in hand with self-sacrifice. Picture this. You're at a party, exhausted from a long day, but your friend needs a ride home. Despite your fatigue, you offer to drive them, sacrificing your own comfort for their well-being. It's a common scenario, and while it demonstrates kindness, it also highlights the potential downside self-neglect. Think about it. How many times have you put others' needs before your own? Perhaps you've skipped meals to make sure your family is fed or stayed up late helping a friend with their problems. These acts are noble, but when they become habitual, they can lead to neglecting your own mental and physical health. Consider the analogy of a well. You keep drawing water for others until it runs dry. Similarly, Constant self-sacrifice without replenishment drains your emotional reservoir. It's like trying to fill others' cups with an empty pitcher, unsustainable and ultimately damaging. Ironically, excessive self-sacrifice can strain relationships rather than strengthen them. People may come to expect your endless generosity, taking advantage of your willingness to give without considering your own needs. Over time, resentment can build leading to strained interactions and fractured connections. Buddhism teaches the importance of balance, the middle way. While kindness is admirable, it shouldn't come at the cost of your own well-being. Just as you put on your oxygen mask before assisting others on a plane, you must prioritize self-care to be truly effective in helping others. Self-sacrifice can also hinder personal growth. By constantly prioritizing others, 
You may neglect opportunities for self-improvement or pursuing your passions. Your dreams and aspirations take a backseat to the needs of those around you, leaving you unfulfilled and stagnant. Moreover, excessive selflessness can blur boundaries, making it difficult to assert your own needs and desires. You may feel guilty for prioritizing yourself or fear disappointing others by setting boundaries. As a result, you become trapped in a cycle of overcommitment and burnout. Recognizing the fine line between kindness and self-sacrifice is crucial for maintaining balance and well-being. It's about finding harmony between helping others and nurturing yourself. By practicing self-care and setting boundaries, you cultivate a reservoir of kindness that can sustain both yourself and those around you. Remember, true kindness begins with compassion for yourself. Only when your own cup is full can you overflow with genuine generosity towards others. So, take a moment to check in with yourself. Are you practicing kindness at the expense of your own well-being? If so, it may be time to reassess your priorities and embrace a healthier, more sustainable approach to kindness. Lesson 5 Kindness and Boundaries Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the demands of others? Imagine this. You're a kind soul, always ready to lend a helping hand. But somehow, people seem to take advantage of your kindness. It's like there's no limit to what they ask of you. Well, that's where boundaries come into play. Boundaries are like invisible lines that define what's acceptable and what's not in your interactions with others. Without them, kindness can become a free-for-all, leaving you feeling drained and depleted. Let's break it down. Picture a friend who constantly asks for favors but never reciprocates. You might feel obligated to say yes every time because, well, you're kind. But here's the thing. Setting boundaries doesn't make you any less kind. In fact, it's an act of self-respect. By establishing clear boundaries, you're showing others how you expect to be treated. Now, you might be thinking, but won't setting boundaries make me seem selfish? Absolutely not. Boundaries are about self-preservation, not selfishness. They allow you to protect your time, energy, and emotional well-being. Think of it as putting on your own oxygen mask before assisting others on a turbulent flight. You can't help anyone if you're suffocating yourself. It's essential to communicate your boundaries clearly and assertively. This doesn't mean being aggressive or confrontational. Instead, it's about expressing your needs respectfully. For example, if a colleague constantly interrupts your work with non-urgent requests, you could say something like, I value our collaboration, but I need dedicated focus time to meet deadlines. Could we schedule a brief meeting later to discuss these matters? Setting boundaries also means learning to say no without guilt. Yes, it can feel uncomfortable at first, especially if you're used to saying yes to everything. But remember, saying no isn't a rejection. It's a prioritization of your own well-being. And here's a little secret. Most people will respect you more for being honest about your limitations. Boundaries aren't just about saying no. They're also about saying yes to what truly matters to you. By prioritizing your needs and values, you create space for meaningful connections and activities that bring you joy. It's like decluttering your life to make room for the things that truly spark your soul. But boundaries aren't set in stone. They're flexible and can evolve over time. As you grow and change, so may your boundaries. And that's perfectly okay. The key is to stay attuned to your inner compass and adjust your boundaries accordingly. Remember, kindness isn't about being a doormat. It's about being compassionate to yourself as well as others. So, embrace the power of boundaries and watch how kindness flourishes in the fertile soil of self-respect. Lesson 6. Kindness and Conflict Conflict is a part of life, whether we like it or not. It can arise from misunderstandings, differences in opinions, or even just bad luck. But what happens when kindness enters the picture? Imagine a scenario, you're at work, and a colleague keeps taking credit for your ideas. You feel frustrated and angry. Your first instinct might be to confront them aggressively, but what if you approached the situation with kindness instead? At its core, kindness in conflict means seeking understanding rather than retaliation. 
It involves listening to the other person's perspective, even if you disagree. This doesn't mean you have to accept their behavior, but by approaching the situation with empathy, you open the door to a more constructive resolution. When kindness meets conflict, it can disarm hostility. Instead of escalating tensions, it fosters a sense of mutual respect and cooperation. This doesn't mean avoiding tough conversations or letting others walk over you. It means choosing to respond with compassion and dignity, even in the face of adversity. Kindness in conflict also means acknowledging your own role in the situation. It requires humility and self-reflection. By taking responsibility for your actions and emotions, you pave the way for genuine reconciliation. However, it's important to recognize that kindness doesn't always guarantee a happy ending. Sometimes, despite your best efforts, conflicts may remain unresolved. But even in these situations, kindness leaves a lasting impact. It plants seeds of goodwill and understanding that can bear fruit in unexpected ways. Moreover, practicing kindness in conflict benefits not only the individuals involved, but also the larger community. It sets a positive example for others to follow and creates a culture of compassion and cooperation. In Buddhism, the concept of loving-kindness, metta, teaches practitioners to cultivate unconditional goodwill towards all beings, including those with whom they may have conflicts. By extending kindness even to those who challenge us, we transcend our own limitations and contribute to a more harmonious world. So. The next time you find yourself in conflict, remember the power of kindness. Approach the situation with an open heart and a willingness to understand. You may be surprised by the transformative effect it has, both on yourself and those around you. Lesson 7. Kindness and Emotional Drain Have you ever felt emotionally drained after being kind to someone? It's like giving a part of yourself away, isn't it? Picture this. You've spent hours listening to a friend's problems, offering support, and comforting them. At the end of it all, you're left feeling exhausted and depleted, almost as if your emotional reservoir has run dry. This emotional drain happens because kindness often requires us to invest our emotional energy. When we extend kindness, we're not just giving our time or resources. We're also giving a piece of our heart. This emotional investment can leave us feeling empty, especially if we're constantly giving without replenishing our own emotional reserves. Think of it like a bank account. Every act of kindness is a withdrawal from your emotional bank. While it's noble to help others, constantly withdrawing without depositing can lead to emotional bankruptcy. Without emotional reserves, you may find yourself feeling burnt out, irritable, or even resentful towards those you're trying to help. Moreover, the emotional drain of kindness can seep into other areas of your life. You might find it harder to focus at work or engage fully in your relationships when you're emotionally exhausted. This can create a ripple effect, impacting not only your well-being but also your effectiveness in various aspects of life. But here's the thing, experiencing emotional drain doesn't mean kindness is inherently harmful. It simply means we need to practice self-care and emotional boundaries. Just as you wouldn't empty your bank account without replenishing it, you shouldn't exhaust yourself emotionally without taking time to recharge. Setting boundaries is essential for maintaining emotional balance. It's okay to say no when you feel overwhelmed or stretched too thin. Remember, you can't pour from an empty cup. Prioritize self-care activities that replenish your emotional reserves, whether it's spending time alone, engaging in hobbies, or seeking support from loved ones. Additionally, practicing mindfulness can help you navigate the emotional drain of kindness. By being present in the moment and acknowledging your feelings without judgment, you can prevent yourself from becoming overwhelmed. Mindfulness allows you to observe your emotions without getting swept away by them, empowering you to respond to situations with clarity and compassion. Ultimately, while kindness may sometimes leave us feeling emotionally drained, it's also a source of immense fulfillment and connection. By recognizing the importance of self-care and setting healthy boundaries, you can continue to extend kindness without sacrificing your own well-being. After all, true kindness begins with kindness to oneself. Lesson 8 Kindness and Dependency 
Have you ever felt like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders? Like you're the only one holding things together? That's a common feeling for many kind-hearted individuals. When you constantly give and give without setting boundaries, you risk becoming a crutch for others. Your kindness might inadvertently foster dependency in those around you. Picture this. You have a friend who always turns to you for help with every little problem. First, you're happy to lend a hand. But over time, you realize they're not making an effort to solve their own issues. They've become dependent on you, relying on your kindness to bail them out of trouble. It's like they've forgotten how to stand on their own two feet. This dependency can be exhausting. You find yourself sacrificing your own needs to cater to theirs. You're stuck in a cycle of enabling behavior where your acts of kindness only serve to perpetuate their reliance on you. This is draining both emotionally and mentally. But here's the thing. By enabling dependency, you're not doing anyone any favors. You're not helping your friend grow or become more self-sufficient. Instead, you're stunting their personal development and hindering their ability to overcome challenges on their own. It's important to recognize the difference between being supportive and being a crutch. Supporting someone means offering encouragement and guidance as they navigate life's ups and downs. Being a crutch means carrying their burdens for them, preventing them from learning how to carry their own weight. So, how can you avoid falling into the trap of fostering dependency? It starts with setting boundaries. Learn to say no when you need to. Encourage your friend to find solutions to their problems independently. Offer support and guidance, but don't do all the work for them. Remember, true kindness isn't about enabling dependency. It's about empowering others to stand tall on their own. By setting boundaries and encouraging self-sufficiency, you'll not only preserve your own well-being, but also help others grow and thrive in the process. Lesson 9. Kindness and Overwhelm Have you ever felt like the weight of the world is on your shoulders? Like every small act of kindness you perform adds another brick to the load you're carrying? That's the thing about kindness. It's a beautiful gesture, but it can also become overwhelming if not managed carefully. Imagine this. You're always the go-to person for everyone's problems. Your friends, family, even acquaintances come to you seeking advice, comfort, or assistance. At first, you feel honored that they trust you and appreciate your kindness. But as time goes on, you realize that you're drowning in other people's needs and neglecting your own. It's like being in a crowded room where everyone wants a piece of you. You're pulled in different directions, trying to meet everyone's expectations, but you're stretched so thin that you feel like you might snap at any moment. And then there's the guilt, the guilt of saying no, of setting boundaries, of putting yourself first for once. You worry that by prioritizing your own well-being, you're somehow being selfish or unkind. But the truth is, you can't pour from an empty cup. You need to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. But here's the thing about overwhelm. It's not just about external pressures. Sometimes, the biggest source of overwhelm comes from within, from your own expectations and perfectionism. You set impossibly high standards for yourself, believing that you need to be everything to everyone all the time. You're constantly striving for perfection, afraid that if you make a mistake or let someone down, you'll be seen as incompetent or unkind. So you push yourself harder and harder until you're burnt out and exhausted unable to muster even an ounce of kindness for yourself, let alone others. And that's when kindness becomes a burden, a heavy weight that drags you down, suffocating you with its demands and expectations. You long for a moment of respite, a chance to breathe and regroup, but it feels like there's no escape from the relentless cycle of giving and giving until there's nothing left. But here's the silver lining. Kindness doesn't have to be all-consuming. It's okay to take a step back, to set boundaries, to prioritize your own well-being. In fact, it's essential. Because true kindness begins with yourself, with treating yourself with the same compassion and understanding that you extend to others. So the next time you feel overwhelmed by kindness, remember this. It's not about doing more, it's about doing what's right for you. And sometimes that means saying no, setting boundaries, and putting yourself first. Because in the end, 
The greatest act of kindness you can offer is the gift of self-care and self-love. Lesson 10 Kindness and Personal Growth Ever thought about how kindness can act as a catalyst for your personal growth journey? Let's take a moment to dive into how practicing kindness can be a game changer for your own development. You see, when you consistently choose kindness, you're not just impacting others. You're also transforming yourself. Kindness opens doors to understanding, empathy, and compassion, essential ingredients for personal growth. It nudges you out of your comfort zone, encouraging you to connect with diverse perspectives and experiences. By extending kindness, you're fostering a mindset of abundance rather than scarcity, promoting a positive outlook on life. Moreover, being kind allows you to tap into your innate strengths and virtues, fostering a sense of fulfillment and purpose. Think about it. Every act of kindness is an opportunity for you to grow, to become a better version of yourself. Whether it's lending a listening ear, offering a helping hand, or simply smiling at a stranger, each action contributes to your own growth. Kindness challenges you to step into the shoes of others, fostering empathy and broadening your understanding of the world. It encourages humility, reminding you that everyone is fighting their own battles and deserving of compassion. Furthermore, practicing kindness cultivates resilience, equipping you with the strength to navigate life's challenges with grace and fortitude. As you embrace kindness, you'll find yourself becoming more open-minded, adaptable, and resilient in the face of adversity. It encourages self-reflection, prompting you to examine your values, beliefs, and actions in alignment with kindness. Kindness fuels a cycle of positivity, uplifting not only those around you but also nourishing your own sense of well-being. It fosters meaningful connections, deepening your relationships and enriching your social support network. Moreover, kindness is contagious. As you spread kindness, you inspire others to do the same, creating a ripple effect of positivity. So, consider kindness as your superpower on the journey of personal growth, empowering you to overcome obstacles and thrive. Remember, every small act of kindness contributes to your own growth, enriching your life in ways you never imagined. Embrace kindness not only for others but also for yourself, and watch as it transforms you into the best version of yourself. Conclusion Welcome back to Wisdom Woven. We've embarked on a journey exploring the unexpected consequences of kindness in our lives. It's been a roller coaster of insights, hasn't it? But here's the deal. Kindness, while it can bring joy and connection, can also throw curveballs our way. Let's sum it up. Balance is key. Kindness is beautiful, but like anything in life, balance is crucial. Don't overextend yourself. Protect your energy. Your kindness shouldn't leave you depleted. Set boundaries to protect your energy and mental health. Know your limits. It's okay to say no sometimes. Recognize your limits and honor them. Self-kindness matters. Remember, kindness starts with yourself. Treat yourself with the same compassion you offer others. Choose wisely. Be discerning about where you invest your kindness. Not everyone will appreciate or reciprocate it. Communication is vital. Clear communication can prevent misunderstandings and resentment. Speak up when needed. Embrace imperfection. Don't expect perfection from yourself or others. Embrace the messiness of humanity. Let go of expectations. Release attachment to outcomes when you extend kindness. It's about the act, not the response. Find your tribe. Surround yourself with people who appreciate and reciprocate your kindness. Stay grounded. Kindness shouldn't be a performance. Stay true to your values even when no one's watching. Self-reflection is key. Regularly reflect on your actions and intentions. Are you being kind out of obligation or genuine care? Embrace growth. Challenges foster growth. View setbacks as opportunities to evolve and learn. Seek support. It's okay to lean on others when you're struggling. Vulnerability builds connection. Practice gratitude. Cultivate gratitude for the kindness you receive and the lessons learned along the way. Stay present. 
Kindness flourishes in the present moment. Don't dwell on the past or worry about the future. Forgive yourself, you're human, and you'll make mistakes. Forgive yourself and keep moving forward. Celebrate small victories. Acknowledge and celebrate your acts of kindness, no matter how small. Spread joy. Your kindness has a ripple effect. Spread joy wherever you go. Stay open. Remain open-hearted despite the challenges. The world needs your kindness now more than ever. Keep learning. The journey doesn't end here. Keep exploring, keep growing, and keep spreading kindness like confetti. So, dear viewer, as we bid adieu, remember, kindness is a double-edged sword, but it's a sword worth wielding. Keep weaving wisdom into your life, and until next time, stay kind, stay curious, and stay tuned to Wisdom Woven. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more insightful content. Take care, and may kindness guide your path always.